Awesome. So yeah, let's let's see the customer process then. Uh, you need to go in list, relationships, customers. So this is a very straightforward navigation. You click on customers and you will be able to see all the customers that are created on this NetSuite account. So let's just wait for a while to uh, open this. Okay. And you can see all the customers right now created on my account. You have the customer ID, internal ID, name, you know, and all the different information on the customer record. Now, here I can see I have 864 uh, customers. If I need to do any, any sort of analysis, if I need to do any filtration, I can always export this uh, customers in Excel and, you know, do my workings as well. So this option is yes. always available on all the list forms. Uh, whenever you're working with NetSuite. Now, if you need to create a new customer, you simply click on new customer. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this uh, standard customer form would open up. Now, this is the standard form, but again, you will notice a lot of custom fields on this page, which we will not be discussing, but perhaps we'll discuss all the important mandatory fields, right? So just like right. vendors, uh, we have a type. Now, this is the type that will determine whether the customer is a company or an individual. So you know you might be in a B2C business or in a retail business or in a software business where you sell directly to the customers. So in your case, uh, the customers could be individuals as well, right? So when you select individual, yes. then you have to mandatory, uh, the, the, the main name field will become mandatory and you will have to give the individual name, first name, last name. But if you select company, you will notice that the company name will become uh, mandatory and you have to give the company name. So we can yes. let's say give any company name, perhaps uh, Samsung INC. All right, so this is my company name. I can create parent child relationship with me, uh, between my customers as well. Like, uh, you know, if there is a group of uh, customers and they have a parent company, and I want to establish that relationship between my NetSuite structure as well. So I can also give the parent company for this uh, customer that I'm creating, right? So there, yes. there will be some situations, uh, you know, in real life scenarios where you have 10 customers. These are 10 different customers, but there is a parent uh, above them who's going to pay their invoices, right? So if that's a situation, again, in NetSuite, you can, you can select the parent company for them. And later, you know, this parent company would be paying the invoices of this Samsung INC. So, if, if you know, depending yes. upon the, the business scenarios and operations, you can assign a parent company to this customer as well. But this parent company itself yes. would be a customer to your company, okay? So this is not any subsidiary or anything like that. This is parent company is also your customer, and this child customer is also your customer. We are just creating a parent-child hierarchy yes. between your customer relationships. Yes. Okay, then we have the status. So status is customer one, lost, uh, or target one, whatever. So, you know, whenever you're creating a customer, you need to uh, give a status. Uh, since we are directly creating them as a customer, the status would be customer close one. We will be discussing the status field in more detail when we go in our CRM cycle, where we convert leads to prospects and then prospects to customers. So at this point in time, we are directly creating a customer. So we'll say, uh, say the status is close one. Again, you can do categorization between your customers. So just like vendors, you can categorize your customers too. So, you know, if there are any customers from apparel business, corporate business, hardware business, uh, IT services, retail services, you can you can add more yes. to, uh, to this list as well. But you can also categorize your customers just like you do your vendor. Yes. You have comments just like vendors again, you know, all the fields are pretty much the same uh, and works in a similar manner. So you can enter any comments on this uh, customer if you want to capture anything. You have email, phone, fax, and alternate phone details that you can also capture on this customer record. And then comes the important part. You have to select the primary subsidiary. So here you will select the subsidiary for which this uh, customer applies to. So let's say GDS Corp. So just like vendor, you know, you need to give one primary subsidiary on, on the record. And then uh, you, can, you can always share this customer amongst uh, multiple subsidiaries as well. So if this customer applies if, uh, to multiple subsidiaries within your group, 
you can just simply assign this uh, customer to different subsidiaries rather than creating duplicate uh, Samsung INC customer. So that option is always available. But then by default, you need to select one primary subsidiary, and this is going to be GTS Corp in our case. Okay. And then these are all all custom fields, so we'll just quickly skip them out. And here in the relationships, just like vendors. You can also capture your contact uh, information details as well. So if this is a company and you need to capture all the relevant key contact persons, you can give the contact name, job title, email, phone, subsidiary role, you know, just like the vendor record. So you have the contact information. If there is any partner, uh, you know, you capture any partner or if this uh, customer came from any agency or any partner of yours, you can also, uh, you know, capture partner details on your customer record. Yeah. Okay. Then you have the address field. Now, this is a very important aspect, especially uh, from sales cycle. So this is where you can capture the shipping address of your customer and the billing address of your customer. So you can edit this and you know hide your shipping addresses. So you can select the country, attention, address, phone number, address one, two, city, state, zip code, and whatnot. Uh, now there, there could be situations, uh, you know, in real life where, where one customer could have multiple shipping addresses or could have multiple billing addresses. So you can always come up on this screen and add as many uh, addresses as you want. So, you know, it's it's not uh, bound to just have one address. A customer could have multiple addresses as well. Okay, right. All right. And then we have the sales tab. So here, you know, you can assign your sales reps. So uh, in in order to cash process you might uh, also be assigning some sales rep who would be directly working with this customer and uh, perhaps would also be uh, getting some commissions uh, based on any sales that is made to, made to this customer so you can assign any you know sales rep on this customer record as well so let's say Afzal P so here I can select the role as sales rep and he's the primary sales rep for this customer so I can add them as sales rep. So now this, this rep is going to be responsible for this particular account that I'm creating. And whenever I create any invoice, sales, Afzal P would be my sales rep and would be assigned as a sales rep on all my transactions. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, and then we will move to the financial tab, which is the most important one. So here you can set your receivables account. So just like uh, vendors, uh, in the vendors, you could give your default payables account. Here you can give your default receivables account that will be used when uh, an invoice is generated uh, for this customer. We'll see that step you know, uh, in a couple of minutes or perhaps like five to 10 minutes, but this is where you can select your default receivables account, okay? Nice. Here, you can give, yeah, here you can select your price level so remember on the item record we could have we had the ability to maintain multiple prices for the same item so now here yes. you can select the price level that will apply for this customer so let's say if we select list price so any 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 order that is entered for this customer would automatically populate a list price if you want to give any discounted price let's say 15% discount price level so now anything that is ordered from this customer automatically 15% discount level would apply on the sales transaction. So this is this is a very important and you know this is where you can select the default price level for this customer. All right. Okay. Uh, let's just keep this to list price for now. You can see the primary currency of this customer is USD and this is all coming from my subsidiary that I have selected over here as my primary subsidiary. I can change the currency to any other currency in which I need to do business with this customer. So, you know, you have all the options of currency and you can do that. So, we'll just keep this to USD. And then we, have, we also have terms. So, if there is any terms, specific terms that you want to give to this customer, let's say net 30 or net 55, net 90, whatever, you know, you can just give it over here. And these are all the default terms. So now what will happen is that whenever I create an invoice, automatically the terms that I've set on this customer would, would come on that transaction. Okay. All right. Then you also have a credit limit. So if there is any specific credit limit that you want to give to this customer, let's say 
and if you don't want to create any further orders for, for this customer once the credit limit is reached to 10,000, you can give a credit limit of 10,000 over here and select uh, on, the hold as on. So now what will happen is if there is any uh, due receivable from this customer that reaches up to 10,000, uh, then system will stop you from creating any new sales transactions for this customer. So, you know, you can also have that credit limit check in, in NetSuite for this customer. All right. Okay. And then we have the tax information. So, you know, you can enter the tax registration number, taxable flag. If you want to calculate sales tax for against this customer on, on the sales transaction, you can select the taxable flag. If there is any default sales tax that you want to have on all the sales transactions from this customer, you can also select a tax item. So now what will happen is that NetSuite will look for the tax item and will automatically populate on your sales transaction. Right. Uh, and then you know you can add multiple currencies for this customer too, just like we uh, saw later uh, previously. Oh, okay, uh, my page just got refreshed, but I'll just go and show you that. All right, so here you can add multiple currencies. So let's say if you are forcing this customer to do business in different currencies with you. So USD is the primary currency, but you can add more currencies over here and work with this customer in those currencies. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me just re enter the name here. All right. And I'm going to give the primary subsidy. All right. So once you have entered all this in relevant information, uh, you can just simply save this record. All right. So now this account is created in your NetSuite and now this, this customer is ready for your transactions. So now from business point of view perspective, like, you know, uh, there will be a team that will be verifying the customers or will be creating the customers. And then uh, the sales team or any other team would be uh, creating transactions or against this uh, customer. So the next thing that will happen for, with this customer is, is we will receive orders from this customer and we will create a sales order record in NetSuite. All right. So 